with uh, Alcoy from the uh, My name is Aaron, and I'll be studying about my piece today. I am a current pastor senior at Gaming Logan, and I'm the founder of the Library of Alcoy. And I wanted to uh, educate the public about um, prevailing public health issues, and I hope you guys learn something from today's presentation. So today, I'll first be presenting about diabetes, and then we'll have uh, the Rajni presenting about our therapy. Um, so I want to start this presentation with our talk to the current U.S. based outbreaks. So first of all, we have salmonella infections from cantaloupes. Um, there have been 230 illnesses, 96 hospitalizations, and three deaths. The disease has passed through the stomach and called out the intestines. You may experience diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration, and high fever. And in this case, the source is non keto or root bread cantaloupes. And make sure to not purchase and consume any please sliced cantaloupes in the outer sink. And always remember to wash your hands and clean your uh, foods properly. Um, for mild symptoms, no treatment is needed, but if the symptoms are more severe, you may take antibiotics. We also have mysterious infections regarding pigeons, nectarines, and plums. There have been 11 illnesses, oh, there have been 11 illnesses, 10 hospitalizations, and one death. Um, the disease infects cells in the intestines and spreads basolaterally. You may experience uh, fever, muscle aches, and tiredness. Um, avoid consumption of these foods distributed by HNC farms. And same as the treatment for the above, um, there is no treatment needed for mild symptoms and antibiotics are needed. Um, I want to cover um, one uh, notable world outbreak. There has been uh, a rock amount of spotted fever in New Mexico. The disease uh, infects the vascular endothelial cells lining the small and medium dust throughout the body. And this causes damage, creating a loss of barrier function, altering the vascular permeability of the body. You may experience moderate to high fever, severe headache, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, loss of appetite, sore throat, and aching muscles and joints. Um, this disease comes from tick bites, and so make sure to apply insect repellent and check for and remove ticks. This disease uh, could have serious complications and needs to be treated as soon as possible with antibiotics such as doxycycline. So let's start today's presentation about diabetes. First of all, this will be covered today. First, the impact of mechanism, then prevention treatment, and finally, the emerging technologies. So diabetes, uh, there are millions of people with diabetes, and the majority of them live in low and middle income countries. Um, diabetes can have some quite serious complications, which we'll cover later. And it, it costs us approximately $413 billion in 2022. So first of all, a little introduction about disease. It's a disease in which the body is not able to produce or respond to insulin properly. It results in high blood sugar and over the long term it can cause uh, complications such as uh, heart disease, vision loss, and kidney disease. And here's some information regarding um, like the basics of understanding uh, like blood sugar regulation. So the body regulates blood sugar through a negative feedback pathway using insulin and glucagon. So when the body is when the blood sugar is too high, insulin is released by the pancreas and beta cells in order to lower the blood sugar by causing uh, by what binds the receptors of the cells, it signals uh, for uh, glucose transporters to be inserted into the membrane so that uh, the cells containing glucose, this would lower the blood sugar. Um, uh, glucose transporters are, uh, are, are um, passive transports, so uh, they are kept within the cells to prevent glucose from coming in when, when, there's, when insulin is not being released. Glucagon is released when the blood sugar is too low. The body uh, it signals for the liver to break down the glycogen stores and release this glucose into the blood. And insulin uh, also uh, happens during, it's also released in the fed state, basically when the body has, especially after a meal, your body has excess calories or energy. So then insulin signals for the cells to actually produce energy stores, such as glycogen or fats. Some early symptoms of diabetes are 
the frequent urination, uh, feeling very thirsty, losing weight without trying, and feeling hunger, uh, blurry vision, uh, having dumb or tingling hands and feet, feeling tired, having dry skin, having sores that move slowly, and having more infections than usual. We will cover why later on. So, right here, I'll explain the, one of the first two symptoms you may experience uh, polyuria, which is frequent urination, and uh, glycosuria. So when you have an extremely high blood sugar, um, your, blood, your blood osmolarity, meaning the concentration of solids in the blood, is much higher than usual. So when there's too much glucose, um, the nephrons, uh, the kidney filtration uh, units, they can't filter out all the glucose, which is why you will have glucose in your urine, which should not happen. Generally, you should have a normal level of zero glucose. Now, Water is also, before you uh, urinate, in the final part of the nephron, there is an area called the collective duct, which uh, causes you to retain some of the water in the urine, uh, so that you don't like, lose too much water. Um, when you have, this is done based on like concentration gradients. Uh, when you have a very high blood osmolarity, the filtrate, or the material that is filtered through the merits or the filtration, uh, the filter part of the nephron, the filtrate will also have a very high, a uh, much higher osmolarity. As a result, it has a lower concentration of water. So when it gets to the collective duct, less water leaves from the filtrate back into the body. So you will lose more water and you will have to free, uh, urinate more freely. Another consequence of diabetes is glycosylation. So um, when you have an extremely, uh, when you have too much uh, blood sugar, uh, there will be more chemical binding to shrink the blood proteins. Now this can be problematic because when something binds to a protein, it causes the protein to change its shape. A protein's shape is actually determined based on its uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary structure. And these depend on the interactions between like the specific uh, structure, like the R groups and like the amino acids, backbones, and stuff. So when you bind to it, it changes the shape of the protein, and because proteins are very specific in their functions. They have a specific shape to bind to a certain thing. And when a shape changes, it cannot do that. And so that impairs the functions. Now this could be problematic because it could bind to the blood clot protein. So you will not be able to clot your blood as well. So wounds will be slower to keep. And finally, oxidative stress. There are cells, there are tissues in the body that do not require insulin to take in glucose, such as the nervous system, the heart, the liver, skeletal muscles. And the cells that do not need insulin to uptake glucose will take in too much glucose. And that increases aerobic respiration or cellular respiration, and that produces re reactive oxygen molecules that can damage the cell. So, in the long term, this will cause problems with neuropathy, which is a da damage to the, uh, to the nervous system. So, you'll experience things like poor vision and tingling sensations. So there are two main types of diabetes. First of all, type 1 diabetes, an autoimmune condition killing the beta cells of the pancreas. So the beta cells are the ones that actually produce insulin. So a person with type 1 diabetes produces little to no insulin. Type 2 diabetes is where the insulin receptors become, become less sensitive to insulin. So in type 2 diabetes, the diabetic actually still produces insulin. It's just not as effective. So in this case, the body would recognize that they would produce a lot more insulin, like a high, a very high concentration of insulin. And this actually strains the beta cells because your body is pushing them so hard to produce a lot more insulin. Over time, your insulin levels will actually just lower and lower until it's a little to none in the end stage because your beta cells will be more and they die off. So let's talk about some risk factors for type 1 diabetes. Um, it generally develops in children, teens, and young adults, and if you have a family history of type 1 diabetes. For type 2 diabetes, if you have pre-diabetes, or if you're overweight or obese, have family members with type 2 diabetes, having a lack of physical activity, and are 45 years or older, you are at risk. So there are a few diagnosis methods, and I'd like to cover two of them. First of all, the oral uh, glucose tolerance test. Essentially, what, what it is is that we give you a very sugary beverage and monitor your sugar levels for quite a while, for period, sometime after. Normally, uh, when, you, when your body when sees this uh, spike in uh, bl uh, blood sugar, they will release insulin, uh, a spike in insulin, to make the blood sugar go back down to normal. But let's say you have type 2 diabetes, or 
your, your receptors would be less sensitive to insulin. So you would release the cells of insulin and your blood sugars wouldn't lower as much. So you, your blood sugar would stay elevated. If you have type 1 diabetes, you can't release much insulin to begin with, so your blood sugar won't stay elevated. And there's also the A1C test. Essentially, um, HbA1c is uh, basically hemoglobin chemically bonded to sugar. This happens uh, sort of spontaneously, but a lot of it forms when uh, uh, there's high levels of blood sugar. So we have like, actually percentage of uh, hemoglobin uh, that indicate whether you are diabetic or not. So below 5.7 is normal. Between 5.7 and 6.4% is pre-diabetic, and above that is diabetic. So just to clarify what that means is that percentage means 5.7% for example means 5.7% of the hemoglobin in your body is bonded to sugar. So generally, like for example, um, when we consider HDO2 or like normally when hemoglobin binds to oxygen, for example, the arteries have 100% of HDO2. They're supposed to be, like all, all of them are supposed to have complete, uh, supposed to be bonded to oxygen, that lower bond when you release oxygen and pick up carbon dioxide. Uh, carb that's sort of digressing. Let's continue. So to prevent diabetes, you should reduce your total carb intake to follow up a high carb diet and minimize your intake of highly processed foods as well as drinking water as your primary beverage. This helps you reduce your sugar, uh, sugar level and control your sugar uh, intake. You should exercise regularly and this is because your skeletal muscles, they, are, they do not need insulin to take in glucose. So when, when they're more active, they'll take it more glucose. This can help you control your blood sugar, uh, let's say you're type 2 diabetic, we'll cover this later. And you should also lose excess weight, as well as quitting smoking and optimizing your vitamin D levels. The latter two points, quitting smoking and optimizing your vitamin D levels, there have been some studies that have shown that these help reduce diabetes, but there is it's not currently known as the mechanism of how they work. So treatments are uh, for type 1 diabetes. You, uh, type 1 diabetics inject themselves with synthetic insulin after meals and monitor their blood glucose levels since they cannot really produce insulin. Now type 2 diabetes, because they still release insulin, but the perception is less sensitive. So of course, you know, exercise and lose weight. Uh, skeletal muscles do not need to take glucose, so type 2 diabetes, this is one way to control your blood sugar early on. And there's also medications that help cells take up glucose, decrease glucose release from the liver, which is inhibiting the, uh, the glucagon's uh, function, essentially, and increasing insulin release. So if you will have diabetes, you, should, you would have to monitor your glucose, have take your medication, have regular checkups. You'd also have to probably work towards more healthy diet to reduce your sugar intake, control your uh, sugar levels through uh, physical exercise and weight management. And finally, try to reduce your stress and sleep more. So this is some of the early technology that we have been developing to combat diabetes. First of all, we've been developing artificial pancreas systems. We have continuous glucose monitor that, and then there's an algorithm which basically takes that information and release a certain amount of insulin accordingly. We've also been working on the ground basic glucose monitoring which uses some sort of EM radiation to sort of like, like, the, like we can analyze like the, the properties of or like the magnitude of this uh, of the radiation to like of the reflected like tissue to like sort of detect glucose levels. And we finally been working on uh, stem, stem cell therapy to help regenerate the beta cells. This is for type of diabetes. So to conclude, um, diabetes is left untreated and has severe consequences such as neuropathy and kidney disease. And finally, if you are pre-diabetic, start eating healthier foods, exercise more, and lose an excess weight to, in order to prevent pre-diabetes from progressing to type 2 diabetes. So if you have any questions, you can ask. Oh, um, I said that uh, there have been studies that have shown that like optimizing your vitamin D levels can help reduce diabetes, but like it's still being researched, so we do not exactly know how it helps. Anyone else? All right. Thanks for listening. And uh, one, one, one question on the uh, yeah. stem cell research part of it. Um, are there any? Um, 
article to anything about this, uh, the progress of it, like how far we are? Um, I'm sure you can find some information about it on PubMed. It's a very good source, and um, I read an article about it, but it's, it's, it's still being researched. So I'm not actually sure exactly how far it's gone. Uh, yeah. Next up we have uh, the machine presenting an art therapy.